Hey folks, welcome back to War Thunder. I have been grinding out the Mirage 2000, and I did make a little intro clip, which I may or may not use for this video, where I talked about using the Mystia and the Etendard in EC6. Well, I did that long enough, and I got the Mirage 3E, and I've heard nothing but bad things about this. Worse flight performance than the Mirage 3C, same weapon loadout, you know, yada yada yada. It's basically a bigger, fatter, heavier Mirage 3C, but it does at least get countermeasures and RWR and in a sim environment, at least for me, if you play it right and you're sneaky and you you know you are careful, having those things to hand, having having countermeasures and having RWR, that's all you really need. Because if anything pings on that, you know that you're potentially at risk. And you know, if you delay that reaction and you end up being at risk like legitimately, then you actually have a chance of like getting rid of it with Countermeasures. So what I've been doing yesterday, I got a very, very boring, extremely late night game on Afghanistan where literally nothing was happening. There was like three people active on the enemy team. And I just farmed the AI bombers for like two hours and we won the match. And I ended up getting 170,000 RP for the Mirage. So I unlocked basically everything I need to make it competitive. And now with rockets and bombs and magics for self-defense, I've been running ship strikes. I actually quite enjoy this map because the terrain you can kind of sneak around and hide if you want to go and hit some of the inland bombing points. You can turn your um, your radar off for some sneaks once you've ID'd stuff. And the ships are actually quite satisfying to take out in my opinion. They're much, much easier to hit than tanks by a humongous amount. And it's satisfying seeing the little explosion diagrammy thing. Uh, so a friendly just marked something in front of us. I don't see anything though. really need to clean my monitor. You know, you think you have, and then there's like a new dot that you didn't notice before. Uh, I wonder if these bombers are friendly. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so I've been... Um, he, I think he might be marking me. I've been hitting ships on this map, and I've been... Uh, when I've used up my ordnance, I'm dropping the rocket pods when there's two rockets left, so that I'm not having to... I, I actually don't know if the pods have drag when they're empty or if it's like a weird model where once they are empty there's like a they, they just turn into like ghosts and the drag and the weight apparently disappears but in case it doesn't i've been dropping the pods when i've still got some rockets left in them because if you use them all you can't select them to drop them anymore like the selective jetson only works with the you know the selective secondary weapon i'm cycling through them all right now the thing that you have selected is the thing that drops but if you've used it all then obviously you can't select it. So, yeah, a bit of an oversight on Guardian's part, unsurprisingly. So I've been hitting the ships with the rockets and the bombs, and then when I've run out, I'm going to either an air domination point, or just generally fly around to see if I can't get into some trouble. This might be a... Uh... That's friendly. And I'm doing alright. It's quite fun. I'm actually enjoying the Mirage 3A, which is not something I thought I'd say. And if you were in the Afghanistan map yesterday, where I was talking about how terrible it is, to an extent I do retract that statement. It is not as good a dogfire as you'd expect it to be, but if you actually understand how to make use of a one circle turn, then, you know, missiles aren't that much of a threat, because you can just turn inside everyone. It's got countermeasures, so that, the, you know, the, uh, the nose, what's they call the all aspect missiles. You can just... Ah, uh, that convoy's way too close to that runway. You can just turn head on, come off your burner and just spam countermeasures. And then when they've passed you, you just turn inside them rather than going into a two circle. And if they keep it up, because a lot of people don't really understand how to dogfight in this game, they tend to turn just back into you. And every time they do it, they get slow. The Mirage gets slow too, but the Mirage has quite good low speed handling, whereas a lot of other stuff doesn't. Um, the only aggravating thing is that quite often you end up making people crash and you don't get credit for that so it's a maneuver kill monster not a actual kill kill monster so that's slowing my grind a little bit more than it probably ought to but i'm enjoying it that's the main thing what is that that's a harrier
I'm not sure why he didn't just shoot an M9 L at me when I didn't know he was there. Maybe he did, and he just completely... <laughs> I don't know how he did that, to be honest. It's the same guy. I managed to go and kill him earlier, and also manoeuvre kill him before that. Which I'm not sure if I'll have the footage of, because I don't... You know, obviously Nvidia isn't going to have captured a, a manoeuvre kill. But maybe, maybe it did. We'll see. So it turns out I do have the clip of the manoeuvre kill on this guy. This isn't him, this is another Harrier that I've found using radar and I've turned the radar off so I can track him without him getting any notification that I'm on him because often you can sort of watch the RWR ping work its way around to your 6 and then know that someone's behind you, even if they don't lock you up. So radar off for the sneaks as I mentioned in an earlier clip. First magic doesn't track. I'm going extremely fast here and don't have the G-suit yet, so I'm having to come off the power significantly and even use the air brakes. Because the, the Mirage can turn on a dime within like the 400 knot range. But any faster, you compress and you block out. From what just happened there, I got my missile off, it killed our target, and then a another Harrier actually engaged his own teammate. So it would have been a team kill situation there if I hadn't killed him first. And then we merged, so I lost quite a lot of speed manoeuvring onto this guy, but I went into a one circle head on. I've now climbed to get my energy back because I can use it as potential energy to dive out to get the speed back up. So whenever you merge in the Mirage, go vertical, because then you can regain what speed you lost by coming back down again. Here I'm not pulling as hard as I could because I'm trying to maintain as much energy as possible because he can gain it back faster than me. He has a much higher thrust to weight. There I see him turning around away from me, so rather than continuing away in a two circle, I, t I reverse it into a one circle. I'm not on the burner here because he has nine L's, he can fire in a head on. He doesn't, so I could have gained a lot more speed than I did in that engagement, which is unfortunate, but we put it back into a vertical again to give us more potential energy on the downwind. He goes across our nose again and I miss again, so you can see how you get quite a lot of these opportunities. So if you don't miss, you get quite a lot of easy kills. And what's happened here is that from repeating the one circle technique, he has got very slow. We have got slow as well, but we have much better handling at lower speed than he does. He has overcooked everything and just lost control and crashed. So as I said before, it's a maneuver kill monster, but you don't get credit for maneuver kills, which is kind of crappy. Here's another example where we are faced with a furball of one, two, three, four, five or so contacts. The guy going left is enemy, but this guy in front of us is also enemy, and he's on a friendly, so I target and prioritize the guy who's a threat to my team. There's a Tomcat in the background going right to the left who's also enemy. Unfortunately, we lose the friendly. I tried to magic lock the Harrier in front, but I didn't want it to fire at the wreck of my teammate. Going too fast and G, uh, G lock in again, so coming off the power briefly, losing a lot of speed. Unfortunately, don't get the hits in at that um, at that merge at that nose crossover. People cross the nose a lot in this game because they don't really understand the fundamentals of BFM. So you can, if you know what you're doing in a dogfight, you can win a lot of the time. And a one circle fighter is great for abusing people that don't know how to how to fight basically um, so I got some lucky hits in there and I thought they'd get him I was worried about being third party because of how many other people were around but it turns out that they all just sort of disappear and leave us alone so we are able to just clean this guy up and then we go on our way and then I'll leave you back to the live commentary of the match breakdown and then after that we'll go to some more dogfight clips like this so stick around ah uh, game over okay we won let's see what the rewards were like so I'm still grinding the, the uh, Mirage F1C, the, uh, the one before the Mirage 2000, 133k, that's not too bad. I did put a Talisman on the Mirage 3E, just to speed things along a little bit, because obviously it's not a great play, but I'm not going to be playing it forever once I get the Mirage 2000, there's no need to touch it ever again. I actually got the Mirage 1 FC, that's good. I'm not going to be able to afford to buy it for like 5,000 years though. What it means is, having a Talisman, that I get to go through the unlocks a lot quicker and whenever you finish a level of each tier you get a bonus towards the next thing so getting through all these faster actually gets me to the next plane faster but we can actually now start researching the Mirage 2000 oh there we go 
117k finally decided it was going to let me have it. So that'll give me a bonus to the Mirage. And so will this. Yes. But you see, this is the problem with Sim, because you earn so much in one match, at least in terms of RP, but you don't earn very much in terms of SL, and what you do earn in SL is completely negated by the cost of the mods that you unlock, because, like, I'm not going to buy that right now. Look at my profit for that match. So I made 206,000, but because of respawn costs, it became 145,000, and I didn't die many times. Like, I want to say, like, four Maybe not even that. But look at the cost incurred because of the unlocks. And like, I don't need belts. And I don't need... I don't really need any of this, to be totally honest with you. I'm probably not going to bother getting it. In fact, I'll get the, I'll get the performance mods. I don't need bells because the defaults are fine. The lack of accuracy is actually kind of good, so making it better with that is unnecessary. I'm never going to use 400 kilogram bombs because the 250s are enough to do everything that you need to, and with a ballistic computer, hitting stuff accurately isn't a problem. And I'm never going to use the AS30s because why would you when you only get one, I think, which is just immediately makes it useless. I suppose you could go on an anti-shipping run with it, but why not just use bombs? Because then you can hit more than one ship. So, fuck it. I'm not going to save myself 127 grand by not buying all that shit. But anyway, yeah, so um, what I'll do now is attempt to grind the money to buy this one, um, and then I'll do another video on this one. Okay, so hopping right in, we get shot at from behind and hit. I did not know this guy was here until he hit me. So he did a good job of sneaking up on me. But the very first thing I'm going to do is pull hard, because in the Mirage with a Delta Wing, if you pull hard, you lose a lot of speed, and that's going to make people overshoot. And when people overshoot, they tend to do this. Don't reverse your turn after you've overshot a Mirage. Just keep going, keep turning in one direction, and if he wants to follow you, he will bleed off an absolute metric arse ton of speed and won't be able to follow us effectively. So, after repairing my engine, I come back in. I ditch my rockets and bombs using the Jason feature on the way in. I've got two friendlies up ahead and an enemy Skyhawk. It's actually the same guy as before. I carry far too much speed on the way in. I try to get a magic shot, but I think it locks the sun. To me, it looks like they should have actually donked him, but they didn't. So we go high, we loop over, again we're going high because it means that we can bank energy to then use in the downward leg. During our recommit, our friendly gets shot down by the Skyhawk. I now know it's the same guy as earlier. He is flaring because he expects a missile, but I don't have the aspect. Magics are only rear aspect only. And then he just gives us a 6. I don't know if he lost fears, I'm not really sure what happened there, but I'm not complaining. Kill him again. So we're in the A point, we're capping the A point now, and I'm going to turn right to stay in it, and I actually Attention see a spec to our 12 o'clock along the border of the A point. Radar is thankfully able to see it and confirms that it's hostile, so it's a phantom as we can see visually as it closes in. I was hoping to flick the nose up and get a snapshot off, but because we were carrying a lot of speed, I didn't have the authority to do that. After the merge, we go high, because that's just what you do. We've talked about this a lot of times now in this video. And then he turns around, and he then climbs. So he's turned a 180, and then he's climbed. He's losing a shitload of speed. I've maintained it by not pulling too hard. I'm not pulling him into the hood. I'm staying in lag. And rather than following him directly, I'm going up, because it means that I'm banking more potential energy for the downward leg. He is pulling hard, because I'm pretty sure he knows that I'm following him. And the harder he pulls, the more speed he loses, and the better it is for me. And because I went high and I'm now diving, I can easily catch him. And he pulled so hard, he ended up so slow that he's departed flight and lost control of his jet. So his situation awareness is now going to suck. He's extremely slow. He's on the back foot, and there's really nothing at all he can do in this situation. Except hope that I suck so much that I can't hit him. But thankfully in this uh, instance, I actually do manage to... After clipping his wing off, I can just lead him to it, because he's just going to spin out, crash on the deck, and I can go back to not being shot at by anyone. Also, I thought. I actually thought at first that that gunshot was the Phantom, just trying to get a last ditch shot off, but it was a Tomcat who immediately overshoots, and then crosses my nose. So, 
we did um, some tail damage to him, but he's also got a smoking engine now when we get a viz on again. And like the Skyhawk at the beginning, he then immediately reverses his turn, which means that I can close the gap in and get closer to him again, and he gives me another opportunity to shoot him by crossing my nose again. And then he climbs up and he does it again. So every time you reverse your turn in front of a Mirage, it allows the Mirage to get closer, and the closer the Mirage gets, the more fucked you are. Because you're going to keep getting slower every time you reverse your turn, and the Mirage will handle better at a slow speed. I unfortunately do suck at shooting when it comes to this Tomcat, which is annoying because the Tomcat's absolutely massive. But the Tomcat then finally starts turning in the same direction, so he's now going into a ray fire, two circle fire. He will keep turning right, and I cannot do anything. Look, I, if I keep pulling him into the hood right now, I will lose so much speed that I won't be able to catch him, so I'm having to ease off significantly and go to lag pursuit so that I can regain speed. And what happens when you do that is that you can call for backup and shoot me down. And I just get a third party because there's not really much I can do in that situation. Moving on, and I'm capping the A point on, I think, the Spain map. Um, ordinarily, you would want to be high and fast in the Mirage because it means that you're more aware of what's going on and you're better able to react to it. If you're low and slow and someone finds you, you're on the back foot immediately. But in this situation, being low and slow makes me harder to find in the first place. So I'm staying in this valley, I'm keeping all the terrain. I'm basically staying below the horizon level because it means that I'm harder to spot visually and I'm harder to pick out from radar cl uh, ground clear. And it worked, that J8 just bombed right over my head and he didn't see me at all. Well, maybe he did, he starts manoeuvring. I'm not sure if he's manoeuvring to stay in the A point though, or to come round on me. At this point, I lose visual. He is there still, however, I'll mark him on uh, in post for you so you can see where he is. And he's going around to the left here, just off the side of the screen. There he goes. I have no idea where he is at this point, and I'm worried, which is why I drop my rocket pods, because I want to be clean, I want to be able to pick up speed quick, though I don't want the hindrance of Follow weight me. and drag from, from a thing I'm not going to need. So, Returning that Jason feature is really nice. If I had known where he was, I would have probably turned left to turn around rather than right. But I can now at least dive back down the length of this mountain and regain some speed. And I'm coming off the burner because I don't want anyone to see that the burner. The burner makes you easier to spot. So I'm, I'm staying off it for the time being. We, we can gain speed back okay from dry thrust. So we'll just stay low and hope he doesn't reacquire me. We are getting RWR pings from our 1 2 o'clock, but I know that there's a ground battle over there, or there was, so it must just be some radar SPA assets that haven't despawned yet. So I'm just constantly scanning around to see if we can find anyone disregarding that RWR ping. And friendlies have started pinging their position. So I check on the map and they're both in the immediate vicinity, they're both in A with me essentially. And I can see that we're capping A as well, so we definitely have a numbers advantage here. So I'm wondering at this point whether the J8 might, might have just bugged down and disappeared. But you can't let your guard down. Friendly pings my 12, and then I get locked from behind. So my thought initially here is that there's a friendly behind me that saw me, pinged where I was and got it wrong and thought I was further away. And, and he's just basically pinged a friendly and nothing's going to come of it. So I pop some counter measures, hope that the friendly sees them and goes, oh yeah, it's friendly. But I don't get visual, I can't see him, and then I hear a jet merge with me, I look behind me, and it's the J8. So all my friendlies that are around here have managed to miss this guy. He somehow didn't kill me despite having my 6, so he must not have any missiles left. Second I see him, I pull high for energy, bank up that potential, and we just pull into him, pull him into the hood, keep him one circle, manage to get hits off on him, and he dives out. And then I spot a missile trail coming right at me, which narrowly misses, and another one. So I'm flaring them off, and because the J8 is damaged, I'm going to focus on this MiG that just shot at me instead. We're extremely low and slow, so there's a risk of us crashing at this point, but there's also a bigger risk of them crashing, because as we've talked about, I have much better low speed handling. The J8 still hasn't found me visually, but he was at an aspect where it was going to be hard for me to get the shot without bleeding off even more speed, so I thought I'll focus the MiG, but then I, I lose Viz on the MiG, and then trying to regain Viz on the MiG, 
I lose this on the J8. Magic Seeker finds him, so I just fire as a Hail Mary to see if it'll kill him. Second I fire it, I realise it's never going to hit him. But then he gives me a gunshot, and then I see that the MiG-21's just crashed in the background. Maneuver kill monster all over again. I didn't even know where he was, and I maneuver killed him. I got him that slow, I made him crash. And then the J8 crashes from the damage I just inflicted, and he actually crashes right next to the wreck of the MiG-21, so... They both basically crash in the same place, and I live, so that worked out pretty well. So, in a Delta, it's all about energy management. Right here, I just bombed um, a bombing point, and then I've turned left hard to get into the A point to resume the capping. Every time I fly this thing out, I'll try and hit some shit on the ground, cap a point if I can, hit some bomber AI or something, and then maybe kill a player and then go, go and land. And that's how I've been grinding it out. It's been working out super, super well. If you combine as many actions as possible, you get quite a lot of earning to the end of it. But when I was heading in for that bombing point, I actually saw a contact on radar to my right-hand side and then turned away from it to get in the A point. I'm assuming he's chasing me down, so I'm staying extremely low. And as soon as I've got over this ridge, I'm going to dive into the valley and pull a 180. And I will see him against the horizon if he's following me. And he is, and he fires a missile. Thankfully it doesn't track. So, what am I going to do? When we merge, I'm going to pull vertical immediately. And reverse my turn. Because I'm going to keep him in the one circle. Climbing and turning into him bleeds off loads of speed for me. Him turning to chase me bleeds off loads of speed for him. And who has better control at low speed? Me. He departs fly briefly, so do I, but I regain it first. He lost a viz during all that, I imagine, because he doesn't seem to be flying in a way that's conducive to actually getting guns on me. And then he pulls away and gives me a 6, and dives out for energy so that we don't both crash into the mountain. He is extremely slow. And he gives me a magic shot of his ass. Slightly worried at first that that might hit terrain, but we get him. So again, we capped the A point. We got chased down. We, if you if you start off defensive in the Mirage, you can get people to overshoot super super easily. So if people who are fighting you, you just need to know to keep turning in the same direction and not reverse their turn. And there's not really a lot that the Mirage can do against that. But so few people know it that it rarely becomes an issue. So we followed that F-104 for a while until I was happy that it was actually hostile because the radar was struggling to spot him at first. And then I get uh, an RWR ping from behind and I see there's two things following me. So we've, we were doing like Mach 1.1, climb up, don't let the speed bleed too much because I want to, re to retain maneuverability for dodging missiles if anyone fires them at me and this guy does, it turns out it's a MiG-23. The second spec I saw took missile shots at him, so I'm quite happy that I don't have to pay attention to the second thing because I'm 90% sure it's a friendly that's trying to help me out. And there he is, it's a Tomcat. Manages to clip the MiG-23. Keeping the MiG-23 one circle, just pulling him into the hood. MiG-23 is extremely slow, he took some damage. He loses control and goes into a flat spin, and he just panic flares, and we're able to just completely detonate him. And that's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to see more, then hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.